This video is going to focus on an app called TinyTap. And TinyTap, I think, is a, a really wonderful tool, especially for younger students to get them creating games and learning. As it says here, create games and learn from others. Now, even though this is probably targeted at a younger age, I think it's still very useful with older students. Let's take a look real fast at the website. You can see that there's a tinytap.it website, and it's got just a simple site here. We have a, a games section where some games are highlighted. You can click on those games. You can click play. And those games will play right here in the browser on a laptop, on a desktop Welcome computer. Welcome to Babyface. Let's learn the different parts of the face. Tap to start. Okay, so you can just play it right there on the website. You can also learn more about it, and there's a blog to go along with it. So that's the website, but let's look now at the app. The app is what you use to make your game or activity. So I'm going to pull up TinyTap, the app, on my iPad, and you can see it loads up. It's got cute graphics, and it uh, takes me in this case to some news. I can just tap done to get through that. And then it takes me to my tiny tap home screen. Now you can see I've added a bunch of other books and activities and things to my uh, tiny tap home page. Some of these I created, others I just added. But how would I use this to create a, a new game or activity? Well, I would tap create in the upper left area and it brings up a canvas that I can work with. And you can see that there's some tools. There's some tools here at the bottom. I have a highlighter, pen, I've got chalk, I've got a pencil, uh, an eraser, text, some, you know, some other things as well. And you can just tap those to use those tools. And of course you can pick a different color if you want. And so you can draw on this canvas and get it ready for your game or activity. I'm just going to erase this and start over since I've made a mess of it. If you double tap the eraser, it gives you the option of erasing the drawing and starting over. So I've done that. What I'd really like to show in this particular tutorial is that tool in the right side. It looks like a camera with a smiley face. If you tap that, it brings up a bunch of different sources from which you can add content to your game. You can see you can access the camera, you can go to your to albums, you can go to Dropbox to bring in uh, visual elements or the web. And there's also at the top creation packs. I'm going to focus on that in this video tutorial. It's a really easy, quick way to get started. So there's all these different themes and uh, collections of images and graphics and backgrounds. And I'm just going to choose the farm animals. Okay, let's say I'm a Spanish teacher and I want to make a game, an activity that will help teach my students the farm animals and give them practice with seeing if they can remember them. So it brings it up. Notice that there's some different farm animals I could choose from, different styles of drawing. There's also backgrounds. I'm going to just tap that background to add it. And you can see now I've got that background and I could draw on it or not. Going back to that same creation packet, I can bring in some, some of the animals. So I'll just tap on that horse, bring the horse in. Okay, and it's probably better just to bring in everything that you want at once instead of one at a time. So I'm just going to tap on the dog, I'll tap on the pig, the lamb, whatever that is, the duck, the goat. Okay, so I've got a bunch of different animals and images in my game. Now just tapping back on the main screen, now I can move these around just by touching and dragging. And if you pinch, you can shrink them. You can also pinch and rotate your fingers, uh, or just put two fingers and rotate them to rotate the objects. Okay, so I'm going to size these a little bit more appropriately and just put those where I want them to be. I've got a pig and a dog. Okay, great. So now, that's pretty good. So now, I could continue if I wanted to, drawing or adding things to this, this image, but that's a pretty good start. Now I'm just going to tap Add Activity in the upper right corner, and I'll tap Next. And this moves on to a second stage, basically, in the creating of this game or activity. You can see TinyTap is limited somewhat in the kinds of activities that you can create with it, the kind of games that you can make with it. Uh, but if you're trying to do uh, an activity or a game that does these things, asks a question, has to do with a puzzle, or make a soundboard where you touch things and sounds are played, you want to say something, you want to play a video, it's very good for activities and games that involve those things. Okay, I want to ask a question, so I'm going to tap ask a question, and I'll just record my question. 
So I tap that record question button. Which of these is a caballo? I tap stop and then it wants me to circle the correct answer. So I'm just going to go over here. Caballo is a horse. So I'm just making a circle around the horse. Okay, that's pretty good. Tap check mark and that's done. If I want to, I can tap question one and I can rename it. Now if I want to, I can record the correct answer. So what will they hear when they tap the right answer? So I'll tap record answer. Si, eso es un caballo. Stop. Now if you want to hear back what you just recorded, you can press the play button. Si, eso es un caballo. All right. And then uh, you, if you want, you can also record a mistake. You know, what's the message when they make a mistake? Lo siento, eso no es correcto. Okay, so that question is done. Now you don't have to record all three of those things, but it's a good idea, I think, to do so. I'll tap done. Now I can add a second question. Record question, and I could just continue on. I could say, which of these is a perro? and go from there. Okay, so let's assume that I've done that already. I've put in question for each of these animals. I could tap done. And now I can give my game a name in the upper left corner. So I could go in and call this something like the animals. Tap done. And it takes me to a screen where I can save my game. It says keep your game safe on the tiny tap cloud. So I can go in and provide a short description learn. You put in the skills, what content area basically is it for, what age, and what language. Now this is kind of tricky, it's Spanish and English. Then you decide is it going to be public or is it not going to be public. By default it's going to want to be public. But for now, until I'm finished with this, I'm going to choose private. And then I tap save game. Now at this point, it wants me to kind of prove that I'm an adult. So I'm going to tap there and hold, and if I can do it properly, that proves I'm, a, I'm an adult. I can log in at this point and save my game. Now the first time that you do that, you may need to register for a free account with TinyTap, but it's a quick process, and then you'll be able to save your game. Okay. So I'm logged in, I've saved the game, it's packaging it, and it's sending the package. So it is now saved and ready to go. So now if I tap play, or if this were public and other people could get it and tap play. Which of these is a caballo? My voice recording would play, and then they would have to tap on caballo. Si, sí, eso es un caballo. And the feedback is played. I just got a high score. So those are the basics of creating a simple tiny tap game. Now there are other games and activities and I look forward to making more tutorials about tiny tap in the future, but for now that's a good introduction just to the beginnings of how to make a simple activity, a simple game in tiny tap. And I think these can be very educational, good activities. Now as you can see, a lot of people use TinyTap to create not necessarily games and activities, but stories and books. And there's some really good ones here, and so I would encourage you to check it out. Inside TinyTap, if you go here toward the top where it says Market, that's where you can go to get other people's books, other people's TinyTap activities and games. So give it a try. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you'd like more video tutorials about technology in the classroom.